uh, boom, and then it can it can it can dip, and then you know, it, it varies a huge amount. So we wish to you know, want to understand why these um, disks are varying like this, and of course part of this is due to that turbulence in the disk. I showed you the movie of turbulence, and turbulence um, is very variable. You know, it changes a lot of time. And so and we believe that part of what we're seeing here is the effect of all of that, that turbulence. You can also um, use the, the variability of the x-rays as uh, to try to map out the vision disks. We can use x-ray echoes. So there's a big x-ray flash. We can see that x-ray flash echo through the source. Um, now, again, the details of how we do that are, are quite technical. But there's a nice um, movie that NASA put together for me. And here you have a black hole in the middle of a very fuzzy accretion disk. And in this, in this movie, they imagine that there is an X-ray flash somewhere in the system. They put, they put the X-ray flash here. So what happens is there's a flash of X-rays. And then it takes some time for those X-rays to travel from where they were produced down to, say, the accretion disk, or from one part of the accretion disk to the other part of the accretion disk. It takes time to travel. With supermassive black holes, remember, the overall size is about the size of our solar system. And um, our solar system, well, let me ask a question. Who knows how long it takes light to travel from the sun to the earth. Does anybody know that, that number? From, from the sun to the earth. That's a little long. It's about seven minutes. About eight minutes. So, um, since these uh, the black hole and the ocean disk are about the size of our solar system, this is how long the echoes are. It takes, you know, minutes to hours for the light from uh, where the X-rays are created to reflect around this ocean disk. So what we can do is, uh, and this is a very subtle analysis, we can take these kinds of data and we can look for echoes in these data. And we can use those echoes to try to um, determine the structure of the accretion disk, determine where the x-rays are coming from, and um, uh, issues such as that. Okay, 还有刚刚想到一个例子
我就利用时间差，我就可以研究这个盘子的结构啊，多大、啊，就这样。因为刚刚那个例子，我看其实只有一一个闪光，我看看反光来的跟原来那个差多远，我就知道这个东西就变得不变了。Okay, so let me um, move on to the, the last topic I wish to talk about. And this is the last of the topics that my research is focused on. And that is the question of how do black holes affect their surroundings? And the answer is that they can pump tremendous amounts of energy into, um, into their galaxy, or into the galaxy. And their energy comes through their radiation and through their jets. So remember that remarkable number I gave you, one kilogram of matter put into the black hole can power all of Taiwan for two weeks. So imagine how much energy you get out of a black hole if you put a star into it. Yeah. or many stars, there can be enormous amounts of energy released from a black hole, and there can be so much energy released, it can actually affect the galaxy as a whole, it can affect the growth of the galaxy. So let me show you um, one example, just to, to give, you, uh, give you a sense of what I'm talking about. This is a nearby galaxy. This is called uh, Centaurus A. It's a, it's a galaxy in the Centaurus constellation. Um, it is what we call an elliptical galaxy. So it is a big ball of stars. It has um, an interesting dust feature. In it. This is the same thing we saw in our own galaxy. There's, there's dust and there's gas, there's blocking the starlight from um, the view. But this is, a, this is a nearby galaxy. Now this is what we see when we look in visible light with our eyes. If we now look in radio and in x-ray and we put that on the picture, we see this. So in the, the radio and the x-ray, we see this remarkable feature up here that comes out of the center of the galaxy. The very center of the galaxy, we believe, is a black hole. It's actually a very strong X-ray source in this galaxy. But from, from the center of the galaxy, we see a jet. We see this beam of gas come out of the galaxy. And we can see that this, this beam of gas is um, blowing a bubble. There's a, there's a bubble that it's, it's, it's blowing. Yeah. You only see one, one, this is a jet, you only see one jet. We believe there is actually another jet. We believe there is another jet coming out of this side. And it blows this bubble. Um, now, it's an interesting question, why don't we see it? When you, when you go to university and study physics, you will learn about the special theory of relativity. So it's Einstein's easy theory, as opposed to his difficult theory. And one of the um, things that comes from Einstein's special theory of relativity is that when something is coming towards you, it looks much brighter than when it's moving away from you. The radiation, something emits, is beamed in the direction it moves. So something coming towards you is much brighter than something going away from you. This jet is coming towards us. And it's coming towards us very fast. Maybe 90% of the speed of light. That would be 270,000 kilometers per second. It's an extremely fast jet. So we believe that there's another jet going the other direction, going away from us, but we simply don't see it because it's too thin because of this, this effect from special relativity. There is tremendous energy 
going down these jets. And this energy will, will uh, impact, it will hit anything else in that galaxy. It will hit the gas, it will hit dust, it will, it will affect that galaxy. So this is a way that the black hole can actually influence the galaxy. Let me show you another picture. Um, this is another nearby galaxy. This is called M87. And all I am showing you here is the radio picture. I am not showing you the, the optical picture. But again, this is a, a, a spectacular image. At the center here is a huge black hole. We believe this black hole is 3 billion solar masses. It has been studied by the Hubble Space Telescope. And the Hubble Space Telescope has observed gas orbiting around that black hole, so we know how massive it is. And again, we see powerful jets come out and blow, blow bubbles. So we wish to understand how um, these black holes, how these jets, affect the galaxy in the space. And one of the things we do is again we can run computer simulations of this process. We can run computer simulations of jets coming out of the black hole and um, hitting the gas that, that's sitting out this, um, the gas that's in the galaxy. So let me show you a computer simulation. So this is this is a simulation which um, I ran with one of my PhD students. And um, we were studying how a jet can push its way out through the gas in a galaxy and how much energy it would give to that gas as it pushed its way out. And whether that would be enough energy to affect the um, the formation or the evolution of that galaxy. So again, this was a, a, a fairly large computer which um, did the simulation. This is actually a three-dimensional simulation. So I'm showing you a slice, but this is actually um, in, this is a three-dimensional There's jets coming out in three dimensions, and that those can be quite expensive simulations. Uh 在这里面平衡的中间那个红点还小发现这样的现在要讲的就是这些借由这些 Let me show you some more pictures of the relevant to this. So this is um, not just one galaxy, this is what we call a cluster of galaxies. It's many galaxies are all together. And there's a strange looking galaxy here, um, and there's other galaxies here. It turns out this galaxy, again, has a massive black hole, and it is swallowing gas and producing jets. So when we um, look at this galaxy cluster with an X ray telescope, and we look at the Chandra X ray telescope, we can take a picture of the X rays in this. And we find this. We find that um, there's a lot of very hot gas 
in this galaxy cluster. And there are bubbles, there are holes in that gas. And these holes are being blown by the jet. It is exactly what you saw in So the jet is blowing a bubble, and there's gas out here, but in here there is very, it's very tenuous gas, very, uh, very little gas. It's very, very, very hot. Um, and so this bubble here is what we see in this picture. Bubbles So, by looking at these kinds of uh, data and comparing it to those computer simulations, we can learn how the jets affect the galaxies and the blocking galaxies. Let me say um, just some final words. This is my last slide. So, um, black holes are beautiful and they're exotic and the most remarkable thing I think is that they really exist. They're, they're out there. We could fly a spaceship to it if we had a fast enough spaceship. So it is, it is amazing that these objects exist. They're so exotic but they really exist and researching them never gets boring. Um, Whenever we answer one of these questions that I put up, new questions appear. And that's, that's fun. It means that we're always asking you, but it's interesting. Always asking you questions. If you're interested in technology, this is also um, a very exciting field because um, the technology is developed for extra astronomy always becomes useful in other parts of um, if you go through an airport, then you uh, have your your bag is X-ray. Okay? The very first person who built an airport X-ray machine was an X-ray astronomer. Okay? He, he took his uh, detectors. This is a, a man called Ricardo Giacomi, who got a Nobel Prize for X-ray astronomy. Um, in the, the 1960s, the late 1960s, he took his uh, technology from his astronomical uh, work and he built an X-ray scanner for an airport. And that was the first X-ray scanner. So um, this technology becomes becomes very useful. That's, that continues to continues to happen. Um, the in many ways, this kind of work can sometimes feel very uh, disconnected. You know, we, we may not be, you know, we're, not, we're not curing cancer. We're not, we're not doing something that is um, immediately beneficial to people. However, that is a short-term view. In the long-term view, uh, we don't know what the implication of this will be. When Einstein was uh, deriving the general theory of relativity, it seemed very disconnected. No one ever thought it would be useful. It turns out Einstein's theory of general relativity is extremely useful. We all use it. Does anybody know why or how we all use it? Einstein的广义相对论，我们以为就是那种理论啊、书本上，其实每一天我们都有在用，我们都有在用这个，我们都知道有哪些应用是广义相对论。Yes, GPS, global positioning system. GPS would not work without Einstein's theory. The reason is that GPS works because you have satellites that have very accurate clocks on them. 
and you work out where you are on the Earth by looking at the satellites and seeing how long it took signals to get to. However, the, um, those clocks are running a little bit too fast. The, 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 those clocks are running at the wrong speed because of general relativity. The clocks are up there, we are here. And so the clocks are running a little bit too fast. And it is crucial to take that into account. If you didn't take that into account, GPS would become wrong by 10 kilometers per day. So, um, in fact, what would actually happen is GPS would stop working because you would not be able to get a solution to the, to the, uh, to the solution. So, um, Einstein had no way of knowing that what he was doing would be useful. Einstein was driven by pure curiosity to understand things. But, um, in fact, it became a crucial part of the world, GPS. So we have no idea what will come of the kind of studies that we do in astronomy. We have no idea what the implications will be. A hundred years from now, uh, we just cannot predict. So at this point, I will stop. I, I thank you very much for your attention. I thank you for coming out on a Saturday. Um, and uh, I will take you out. Thank you. The black house can release X-ray spectrum light. The black house can release X-ray spectrum light, but it can absorb absorb the visible light. And it just it is. Two so guys just, just different in frequency. And what makes the difference? Or just the energy emission? That's, that's a good question. Um, so the question is why, does a, why do black holes emit different frequencies? Um, so the, the answer is it depends how hot the gas is. So if the gas, um, if the gas gets very hot, it will emit X-rays. If it doesn't get so hot, it will emit optical and ultraviolet. Um, it is actually even more interesting than that, though, because um, in some black holes, they emit X-rays, and we don't understand why. There are some black holes where the gas only gets hot enough to emit visible light and ultraviolet light. But in fact, we see the experts. And um, we are still trying to understand why. So it's an actually very interesting question. Okay. I'm curious if someone go to the 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 event or the power of power of Different. Yeah, that, that's a, another very good question. So uh, we believe that if you were to fall into a black hole, you would actually pass over the event horizon without noticing anything. Like you would not experience anything strange as you pass over the event horizon. Um, what would happen is as you got closer and closer to the singularity, you would feel the forces. Out. And eventually, it would be the singularity that you would feel. Um, but it would be the singularity that you would feel. But it's a, uh, a very good, um, there is a good analogy here, which is a waterfall. So imagine that you're swimming and there's a waterfall. You can only swim so fast. So as the water gets closer to the waterfall, it speeds up eventually. Falls over. Well, this is very dangerous because you could swim, you could, um, you could pass over the point 
where the water is flowing faster than you could swim. And then you would be swept over the water. But you wouldn't notice as you pass that point. So that's actually a very close uh, analogy. <coughs> You won't 
feel for your test on the horizon, but I want to ask that what will it happen after you get sucked into the black hole, like you fell down into the waterfall, or you crash into pieces, or what will happen? So, so what actually happens 